make some noise in here! I'm Valicia Moore Tolliver and this is William Armstead and we are facilitating this study on leadership and we're using this real short read by John C. Maxwell called Leadership 101. Um, we're going to open up with a word of prayer and then we'll get right into the study. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for all of your mercy and your grace. We thank you for waking us up and starting us on our way. We thank you for health, happiness, friends, family, food, clothing, and shelter. More than anything else, God, we thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross, that we might have life abundantly. We ask that you would forgive us for our sins on this morning. We pray that you would forgive us for sins of omission and commission, sins both known and unknown. And we thank you in advance for washing them away into the sea of forgetfulness. We ask that you would circumcise both our hearts and our minds on this day and that if you should find anything that's not like you, that's displeasing to you, that's unclean, unhealthy, unsafe, we ask that you would take it away from us and that you would fill that space instead with the fruit of the Spirit. We ask that you would open up our hearts and allow us to partake in your word. Let us not go forward and not apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Leadership 101. Uh, John C. Maxwell has several texts on leadership, this being the shortest read. Um, he has several, seven uh, foundational tenets of leadership. And we're going to go in depth onto the first one, which is integrity. And um, we liken it to character. Uh, chapter one of the book starts with a story about the McDonald brothers, um, Richard and Maurice, the founders of um, the McDonald's franchise. And the, they go into... Uh, a short narrative about how they decided to expand and the fact that they weren't natural leaders. And instead, they ended up partnering with um, Mr. Croc. And the way the narrative goes, uh, Croc has these uh, leadership abilities that make them more successful. And even though they had this power, uh, the position in, th in that their, their restaurants were functioning, they were viable, they weren't thriving and doing the best, best they could. And that really kind of was synonymous with the story that you and I talked about with, I guess it was Vashti and Esther, uh -huh. and how um, Esther had Mordecai as this older sort of a, a mentor. Yes. And her leadership, therefore, was much more effective. Yes. I think that was, uh, that was the book of Esther. That's the first one we talked about. Absolutely. And we talked a little bit about Eunice and Lois. Yes. And how Timothy needed to be reminded of where, in fact, his um, character and his integrity and the, the state of his heart, where that uh, began, where it started from. Absolutely. So the first one, back to integrity. And the definition you found that we both agreed was probably the best was the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, having integrity means doing the right thing in a reliable way. It's a personality trait that we admire and since it means a person has a moral compass that hasn't and doesn't waver. Absolutely. So that was um, Acts 6 and 3 was the verse. Uh -huh. Wherefore brethren Look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. And that again points to the notion that um, what we do and what we say can't alter based on uh, where we are, whether that's a physical or a spiritual sense or where we are mentally, our character and the content of that, what we do kind of has to be consistent. Absolutely. I think we both mentioned that in the state of that, that's kind of that need for that is obvious in, in the state of the world today and, and our nation, that need for consistency and integrity being Absolutely. critical. Did you want to, the second one I think was, did you want to go into the ability to delegate or? Uh, well, 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 yes, Let, let's talk about uh, ability to delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, again, and the definition that's provided is to uh, entrust a task or responsibility to another person typically one who is less senior than thyself or oneself, the power delegated to him must never be misused. And there is a cliche that uh, we have known the world over with uh, uh, great power should come great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we should be able to exercise that power and authority in the spirit of meekness at every level. 
uh, delegating authority, uh, we happen to be educators, mm -hmm. and we're entrusted with uh, uh, our most valuable inheritance, and that's our children. Right. And they look to us for leadership. They look to us to make decisions integrity. They look to us to guide them in the way, as the Bible says, to align that in the way they should go. Right. And when they grow older, they won't depart. And even to align, align that same vein of thought with what's going on in the country, mm -hmm. delegate an authority. You must take res responsibility when you make bad decisions. Absolutely. You cannot claim uh, all the, the progress, all the good things, and, 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 and rejoice in that and not also accept some of those bad things that mm -hmm. come along with it. Absolutely. So delegation happens on all levels of power, in the family, uh, in the home, in education, in religious institutions, governmental bodies, and so on. Yeah, we had talked also about uh, that sense of discernment in yes. delegating and, and selecting the right person for the right task. Oftentimes, we have the greatest of intentions, we have a good heart, sometimes we can kind of put that one person and have way more on one person than needs to be. Absolutely. So having that spirit of discernment in deciding who, when, and where to delegate, definitely I have to agree. One of the critical traits of, of spiritual leadership and leadership in every sense. Yes. And then next was communication, which we agree in, in every sense of, of community, uh, communication is critical. Um, not only just saying what you mean, but at the same time meaning what you, <laughs> what you actually do say. Absolutely. So the definition we used was the ability to communicate information accurately, clearly, and as intended is a vital life skill and something that should not be overlooked. It's never too late to work on your communication skills and by doing so, you may well find that you improve your, improve your quality of life. I notice with young people, in fact, that's one of the first things we start to look at when we develop them, um, whether it's uh, for leadership specifically, is their ability to um, communicate, their ability yes. to get their, their message forward accurately. Yes. And, and, and communication is carried out in many different ways. Mm. Uh, more than 80% of communication is carried out by body language. So we uh, uh, should be more self-aware of what we communicate by our body language. Absolutely. You know, because uh, there's attitude in it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the things that we do, especially unto the Lord and unto those people that have authority of it, mm. we should have an uh, attitude of a go-getter. Absolutely. Because the king's business requires haste. Right. I think um, communication, especially in, um, in, the, in the leadership um, realm, uh, is critical primarily because uh, people are, are constantly watching and yes. constantly assessing and constantly getting that information. And like you said, not just verbally. There, people are aware of everything in leadership. So when we stand before others, um, how we dress, our mannerisms, yes. everything is going to be a part of what we communicate to that audience. Absolutely. And what is said and what is meant by what has been said. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, sender. Communication happens when the sender sends a message and the receiver mm -hmm. receive that message and the receiver can give back what the sender says and that's, with clarity. That's, that's one of the practices, too, um, I think, definitely within in the Christian realm is being able to say, well, well, what I heard you say is X, Y, and Z, just to make sure there is clarity and that there isn't that, that gray area. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we're moving on to self-aware. Mm -hmm. And self-aware is a really, really important leadership quality. Uh, when you dive into self-awareness, you could see your, both your strengths and your weaknesses. Mm. And it's not a bad place to see, uh, be to uh, be able to identify your weaknesses because these are areas of improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also use uh, self-awareness to the extent of looking back in reflection and saying, what did I do right? Mm -hmm. What did I do wrong? How could it have been done differently? Better, right we could get best lessons learned mm -hmm. out of those situations. And so one of the scenarios that, I, that came to mind when I looked at this, this segment on self-awareness was uh, a, a situation that happened when I was teaching abroad and when we had an Arabic counterpart and every English-speaking teacher was paired with, a, with an uh, Islamic, a Muslim teacher. 
And one day, you know, our relationship had evolved and she came to me and she said, does your book teach you to hate me? And I thought, at the time I was working on my lesson plan, so I thought, oh, this is about the kids, this has nothing to do with you. But she made the symbol of the cross and she indicated that she was talking about the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so the way that uh, relates to self-awareness was that at the time, you know, I was there doing a job, I had my own financial issues going on, but within all of that, God has this way of bringing you back around and, and reminding you that the mission, he's always the, the primary mission. And even yes. though I didn't see it as such, I became more aware of, okay, this person is looking to me for uh, Christian ideology, something yes. that I, I had no idea that this was going to be a part of my placement there. But this was, I was going to have an opportunity to be the only Bible that she would ever see. And yes. that made me more than self-aware in that moment, but moving forward, I had to be reminded that when, when she speaks about Christianity, she's typically going to be speaking of me. When she says Christians do X, Y, Z, Christians say X, Y, Z, she's going to be referencing me. And Absolutely. so that's self-awareness. It, it's it's a, a heavy crown to wear. But like you said, it, it shows um, that vulnerability and that space for growth. It Absolutely. keeps us, us rooted in what we need to move forward and effectively. Absolutely. It's like having that mirror, living mm -hmm. in front of a mirror every single day. <laughs> Literally, which is what leadership is. Absolutely. Yeah, at its essence and at its core. And gratitude, the spirit of gratitude. Um, not one that typically comes to mind when I would think of, of leadership, but when I really started to, to delve into it, um, it's an honor. It is yes. a privilege to be selected to, especially to, for kingdom work. Yes. And so the definition we use was gratitude helps people feel more positive, emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. People feel and express gratitude in multiple ways. Yes. I'm, I'm reminded of uh, David. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, he's among the uh, patriarchs that uh, I really enjoy reading and studying and mm -hmm. meditating. Psalms 122 um, says, I was glad. Mm. Absolutely. And think of moments where you have been glad. What makes you glad? What makes you happy? What brings that excitement? Mm -hmm. But David had this testimony that he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Mm. And think about all the places that we have gone that brought gladness. Right. And David is talking about going into the house of the Lord. Absolutely. And what's so significant about that particular division of Psalm is that uh, when you look at leadership between Saul and David, Saul never went out there the presence of God. He never went out there the Ark of the Covenant. Wow. And David went and recovered it. Hmm. And so again, you can't miss anything uh, unless you had it before. <laughs> right. And so Israel had lost the presence, lost that covenant relationship, lost that excitement. Mm. Their spirit was broken, but when they got the presence of God back, mm. and also in everything that we do, we should do it in excellence as right. people of God, as leaders of God. And as you said earlier, people are watching your influence mm -hmm. and they are learning vicariously. And again, David got the covenant back, the, the, uh, the presence of God, and many different places said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. Why? Because mm -hmm. he was glad about it. Mm. And taking on leadership, we should find excitement in the growth of it. Right. The ability to mentor, the ability to grow others. Mm. And again, uh, just focus on what makes you glad. Right. And let's work toward aligning that gladness with the spiritual principles uh, that is laid before us. Absolutely. I think back to Maxwell also, um, he ends that section with um, this uh, subheading called Success Without Leadership. And mm. I think it really aligns with the whole gratitude concept in that here he was saying, you know, the, the brothers were moderately successful. Their, their business was viable, but it wasn't thriving. It wasn't mm -hmm. everything that it could be. Now they could have been satisfied with, with just a, a viable business mm -hmm. and yet being humbling themselves, yielding to Croc, much like we said, um, kind of Esther and Mordecai, their relationship, mm -hmm. and benefiting from that, and the gratitude in that, in the fact that that obedience allowed them to, to McDonald's to become what it is today. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was an impro appropriate story to add to that first section. And then gratitude, of course, kind of being that centerpiece to all of the, the traits of, of a, a successful and influential leader. Absolutely. Uh, 
learning agility is a fascinating trait to have. Mm -hmm. And in short, it lends itself to mean being flexible. Mm. <laughs> uh, we live in an information, high information society, mm -hmm. where information we're inundated uh, with through social media, family, and all social institutions. 24 hours. And, and uh, 24 hours, you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. And our minds and our bodies and our experience can't keep up with it. Right. And with that being said, we, we need to learn how to be flexible, right. learn how to operate in this learning agility, learning how to take large amounts of information mm -hmm. and um, make it clear and concise going back to communication. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded in the, in the Bible with King Solomon mm -hmm. and his ability to demonstrate learning agility right. when two ladies that happened to be harlots Mm -hmm. Forget that they were harlots, wisdom and justice, and, and, and learning uh, uh, agility was needed in that situation. Mm -hmm. And long story short, one lady, one harlot, overlaid her baby. She rolled over and killed her baby, and she swapped babies with the next lady. And to fast forward that story, they went between, before the king. Mm -hmm. And they had these long narratives and stories to say, hey, what happened? Right. But getting to the point, hence uh, 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 in the economy, they use this term split in the babies, mm -hmm. meaning we're going to compromise. And so Solomon, this is in his uh, uh, learning agility, he said, bring me a sword. Mm -hmm. We'll just split the baby. Mm -hmm. You'll get uh, one mother get half and the other mother get the other half. Mm -hmm. But the true mother cried out and said, no, give her the baby. And then because of that learning agility, Solomon said, no, this is the true mother. Right. Right. So we need to be able to think on our feet and think of all those people that are involved when we make these decisions, yeah. when we're using information. Definitely, definitely. Um, I was thinking about, um, it's kind of, <laughs> I guess it's on topic, cognitive dissonance, when you talk about mm -hmm. learning agility. We have these preconceived ideas um, before we even go into certain situations. Uh -huh. and I think with leadership, um, there's a concept and it's, a, it's about acknowledging that bias and that, mm -hmm. that um, prejudice and so in a, as a way to defeat it as a way to overcome it and I think having the word of God as the standard kind of should be that compass yes. that should be this, this moral compass and it should always kind of center on that and that again would help with with cognitive dif dissonance absolutely. absolutely and so influence is the next on the list of character traits for an effective and an influential leader. Mm -hmm. And we define it as a, a, a competency that refers to the ability to have a positive impact on others, to persuade or to convince them and, and to gain their support. With the influence, competency, you're persuasive and engaging, and you can build by buy-in from key people. Mm -hmm. Getting people, it, it's not a, a leader if, if no one's following. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And you alluded to earlier about Esther and Mordecai and that relationship mm -hmm. and speaking of influence, <clears throat> they being, <clears throat> excuse me, they being relatives. Mm -hmm. And Esther had come to the kingdom at such a time as this. But thank God for Mordecai because he encouraged her and also told us because of his role in the kingdom, mm -hmm. he was able to go to her and said, Think not only of yourself. Mm. Well, we're going through difficult times as in this pandemic, mm -hmm. as in, you know, even before the pandemic, I do want to preference that there were people that were already affected in ways that this pandemic has highlighted. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mordecai, whose name means small fish in a big pond. And mm. so how many times have we felt like a, like a <laughs> small fish in a big pond when God sent you? Mm -hmm. And we do have to fiercely protect this influence. But to uh, uh, fast forward that story, he told her, think not only of yourself. Oftentimes we, we bring attention to what she said, if I perish, I perish. Mm -hmm. But we forget to read the book Whereas it clearly articulates in Esther, she feared. Mm. And we need to confront the thing. Anything you do not confront, you cannot change. Right. And he confronted uh, um, Esther in love. Hmm. And she was able to, because of his influence, change her mind or fully persuade her. Absolutely. And we need to be able to persuade people to do the right thing. 
It's interesting too, I think that she, the Bible, she led with humility, Amen. even after she had been elevated to this high honor. Here Vashti was, who had that, that place of significance yes. and influence and used it in such a way that she was totally ineffective. Yes. And so much so that she disappears completely from the Bible after yes. the first chapter. We never hear anything else about her. Yes. And yet here Esther is with this spirit of humility. Yes. And she's able to, and, and she did so because she needed to plead for her people. Amen. Like you said, not about herself. That, and that's what leadership is, I think. It is that Absolutely. ultimate sacrifice, that um, putting the, the best interest of the greater good Absolutely. before oneself. Well said. Uh, empathy. Empathy is not sympathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. To put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Oftentimes, it's easy to say, now, if that was me, <laughs> This is what I would have right, done. In hindsight. But we have to understand things in context. Mm -hmm. How many of us have been in a den of lions? Hmm. How many of us have been faced with being thrown into the furnace fire? Right. And not to minimize or diminish anyone's challenges or struggles or whatever, mm -hmm. but again, we have been given stories and parables to reflect back upon. Absolutely. And when we look at leadership, we can look at leadership even at local levels, even in the family. The family is a good example of the kind of leadership, mm -hmm. both good and bad. True. And uh, I'm an educator by profession, and one student critiqued me one in my um, earlier career and let me know that I was a terrible educator. <laughs> and so being agile, not sarcastic, being agile, I made the comment, you can learn just as much from a bad teacher as you can from a good one. It is up to you how you want to guide your learning. Right, right. Yeah, empathy. I, I'm looking at the again the state of of, a, of a, our country right now. I'm seeing this level of diversity within yeah. in the protests and within this movement, and it's it's speaks volumes. I think for people who have lived with privilege all of their lives yes. to now be able to well, do what I'm, I'm going to assume is is empathize mm -hmm. with people who have been you know in this struggle for. 400 years or more. Absolutely. So the level of empathy that I'm seeing, the level of involvement and engagement and participation, it's encouraging to yes. say that the very least. Yes. And oftentimes it, it's unfortunate that we uh, have to see the story mm -hmm. mm. instead of believing the history. <laughs> right, 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 right. So the final, final character trait for today, uh, looking at effective leadership, is courage. Mm -hmm. And being courageous, courageous people believe in themselves. I think that part really, I had to take a moment yeah. when I, that part, just because it, it's, it's kind of, it's on the surface, seems yes. really kind of simple, but the concept of, of really, even in this, and, and how I struggled with my first attempt at completing this study, believing in oneself. And they know how they are, they know who they are, and yes. they know what they stand for. Yes. They have strong values, they recognize their personal capabilities, and they're confident in meeting the challenge that lies before them. Yes. Courageous people are passionate and purposeful. That, this whole, yes. all of that kind of sums up everything in, in our leadership study. Absolutely. And, and courage is, is, is really powerful. Uh, we see it every day. Mm -hmm. It takes courage to protest. It does. Uh, don't minimize the power of protesting those people that are not protesting. Maybe mm -hmm. you, you need to find your rank where you belong in it. You mm -hmm. may not need to be on the front line. Right. Maybe you can donate. Absolutely. Maybe you can help with the flyers. Right. Uh, quickly, too, uh, I'm reminded again of David. Mm -hmm. David has a, had a resume of courage. Mm -hmm. He said, thy servant killed the bear. Hmm. He killed the lion. And so we need to get experience in this courage. We need to go, grow from glory to glory. And he identified this giant, this bigger hmm. than life obstacle and said, but this uncircumcised hmm. Philistine, he'll be nothing. That's similar to what we were talking about with the, the, the spies that were sent out and the ones that came back and gave the, the varying reports. Right, right. And they were labeled wicked because they discouraged mm -hmm. uh, uh, all of Israel. Mm. While the other two, Joshua and Caleb, said we're more than able. So it takes 
courage. Right. Courage is right. believing beyond the facts. Especially in the face where other people are contradicting you. Absolutely. You know, right here in the, in the moment. That courage to me often does occur in the moment. And I'm seeing Absolutely. it in, in small scale and large where people are just speaking up. Just even on social media, you'll see people who, you know, don't often comment or whatever. But here now they're saying, you know what, this is not appropriate. Or Absolutely. I don't agree with this. Or there's another way of looking at this. So courage can be those small acts, like you said. Absolutely. It's not everybody out on the on the front lines, but everybody has a part that they can play. Absolutely. In, in effectual leadership and, and developing change. Absolutely. And I think that wraps up. No, no, one more. Respect. How could I? The last one was respect. Okay. Well. Thank you. Oh. So respect. <laughs> uh, we have dubbed Aretha Franklin as being the queen <laughs> of soul, and that particular anthem has moved the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. and the civil rights movement has never ended, Right. and we are still demanding R-E-S-P-E-C-T <laughs> in the church, in mm -hmm. our leaders, our national leaders, mm -hmm. our local leaders, Absolutely. in the home we declare God requires uh, respect. Absolutely. And again, respect a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so again, respect is still required even today. Absolutely. And, and it's not always mm -hmm. easy, you know. That's Absolutely. Not, that's <laughs> yep. You're right. Yeah. So we are going to end, I guess, in a word of prayer as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send the handout to accompany this lesson. And thank you for this opportunity. I'm glad to be a part. Father God, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you, God, for being able to partake in this word and share. Lord God, let it continue to go from heart to heart. Let it community to community, Lord God. Let it resonate with your people. Lord God, let it bring change. Let it bring conviction. We thank you for it. We, we are grateful today to have this moment. We could have been anywhere else, but yes. we desire to be here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.